In this English video, we're going to talk about having conversations in English. Listening to English talks is super important for getting better at English. It helps you understand and speak better. So let's get started and work on improving our English skills together. I'm feeling so overwhelmed with the project deadline next week. It's like a mountain of work. I totally understand, Lisa. My task list is just as long. What's causing you the most stress? It's the report I have to finish. There's so much data to analyze and not enough time. Oh, I've been there. For me, it's the presentation. I have to speak in front of the whole team, and I'm nervous about it. Presentations can be tough. Have you found a way to manage your nerves? I practice a lot. It helps me feel more prepared. Maybe we can help each other out? That's a great idea. We could review each other's work. Fresh eyes might spot things we missed. Exactly. And talking about our struggles makes them feel less scary, doesn't it? It does. Sharing the load lightens it a bit. Thanks for being there, Sophia. Anytime, Lisa. We're in this together. Let's tackle our tasks one step at a time. Right. One step at a time? So, what's your plan for today? I'll start by outlining the main points for my presentation. How about you? I'll dive into the data analysis. Breaking it down into smaller parts should help. Sounds like a plan. We can check in later and see how we're doing. Looking forward to it. Thanks for the chat, Sophia. It's really helped. Me too, Lisa. Remember, we'll get through this deadline. We always do. You're right. We've got this. Let's show this project who's boss. That's the spirit. Catch you later, Lisa. Bye, Sophia. And hey, if you need a break later, let's grab a coffee. So, Lisa, how do you usually handle the pressure when work gets too intense? Well, I try to organize my tasks. Making a list helps me focus on one thing at a time. That's smart. I also find that taking short walks helps clear my mind. Yes, getting some fresh air is always refreshing. Do you have any other tips? Sometimes I talk to colleagues who've done similar tasks. Their advice can be really helpful. I hadn't thought of that. Sharing experiences can provide new insights, right? Absolutely. And it's comforting to know others have faced the same challenges. True. It's like building a small support network within the workplace. Exactly. And don't forget, we can always ask for help if we need it. You're right. Asking for help isn't a sign of weakness. It's actually quite brave. Indeed. And speaking of help, how about we set a time to review our progress? Good idea. How does lunchtime sound? We can grab a bite and discuss our work. Perfect. It's a date. And remember, we're aiming for progress, not perfection. That's a great reminder. Progress over perfection. I'll keep that in mind. All right, let's get back to it. We've got this, Lisa. Thanks, Sophia. You're a star. Let's show these deadlines what we're made of. Definitely. Catch you at lunch, Lisa. We'll conquer this together. See you then, Sophia. And thanks again for the chat. It's made a big difference. Anytime, Lisa. We're stronger together. Bye for now. Lisa, when the work piles up, what's your strategy to stay calm? I find that breaking tasks into smaller, manageable parts helps a lot. That's a good approach. I also make sure to take regular breaks. Breaks are essential. A few minutes away from the desk can refresh your mind. Indeed. And how do you deal with the pressure of meeting deadlines? I prioritize my tasks. Knowing what needs to be done first keeps me focused. Prioritizing is key. I also set realistic goals for each day. Setting goals is a great idea. It gives you a clear target to work towards. Absolutely. And it's important to celebrate small victories, don't you think? Definitely. Each completed task is a step closer to the finish line. Speaking of steps, do you incorporate any physical activity into your day? I try to. Even a short walk can make a big difference in my energy levels. I agree. 
Exercise is a great stress reliever. What about after work? After work, I like to unwind with a book or some music. It helps me relax. That sounds lovely. I enjoy cooking a nice meal. It's therapeutic for me. Cooking is a great way to unwind. Plus, you get to enjoy a delicious meal. Exactly. And how do you prepare for the next day? I review my to-do list and make sure everything is ready for the morning. Preparation is crucial. I do the same. It makes mornings less stressful. True. A good start can set the tone for the whole day. Right. And remember, it's okay to ask for help if you're overwhelmed. Asking for help is something I'm learning to do more. It's beneficial. It is. Is? We all need support sometimes. Well, I should get back to work. Me too. Let's catch up later and see how we're doing. Sounds good. Take care, Lisa. And remember, we're in this together. Thanks, Sophia. You too. We'll make it through this busy period. We will. Bye for now, Lisa. And good luck with your tasks. Bye, Sophia. And thanks for the encouragement. It means a lot. Maintaining a balance is tough, Lisa. What's your secret? I try to keep work at work. When I'm home, I focus on family and relaxation. That's a good boundary. I do something similar. Evenings are for personal time. Exactly. And how do you recharge on the weekends? I love being outdoors. A hike or a picnic does wonders for me. Outdoor activities are great. I enjoy gardening. It's peaceful and rewarding. Gardening sounds lovely. Watching something grow because of your care is special. It is. And speaking of growth, how do you ensure personal growth amidst the busy schedule? I set aside time for reading and learning new things, even if it's just a few pages a day. That's inspiring. I've been meaning to pick up a new hobby, too. You should. It's never too late to start something new. I'll think about it. Maybe something artistic. Painting or pottery. Art is a great outlet. It lets you express yourself in unique ways. True. And it's important to have an outlet, isn't it? Absolutely. It helps to manage stress and keep a clear mind. Speaking of stress, do you ever feel like you're not doing enough? Sometimes. But I remind myself that it's about quality, not quantity. That's a good perspective. Quality over quantity. I'll remember that. And don't forget to celebrate your achievements, no matter how small. I will. Celebrating the small things can bring so much joy. It can. Well, I better get back to my tasks. How about you? Same here. Let's stay positive and keep moving forward. Definitely. We'll touch base later and share our progress. Sounds good. Take care, Sophia. And thanks for the motivation. Anytime, Lisa. We're stronger than we think. Bye for now. Bye, Sophia. And remember, we're more than our work. I'll keep that in mind. See you later. With work being so busy, it's hard to find time for hobbies. How do you manage, Sophia? I try to schedule time for hobbies just like I would for a work task. That's a good idea. Treating personal time with the same importance as work. Exactly. And sometimes I combine hobbies with socializing. Like a book club. Combining activities sounds efficient. I might try that with a cooking group. Cooking with friends can be fun. You learn new recipes and enjoy good company. True. And it's a great way to relax and de-stress. Definitely. What hobbies are you thinking of picking up? I've always wanted to learn photography. Capturing moments seems so fulfilling. Photography is wonderful. It lets you see the world from different perspectives. It does. And it encourages you to explore new places. Exploration is exciting. It's like an adventure every time you go out. I love that idea. An adventure in search of the perfect shot. And the best part is there's no right or wrong. It's all about creativity. That's comforting. No pressure, just expression. Right. 
And speaking of expression, do you ever write, Lisa? I used to journal. It helped me sort through my thoughts. Journaling is a powerful tool. It's a conversation with yourself. It is. Maybe I should start again. It could help with work stress, too. I think it would. Writing down worries makes them seem smaller. I'll give it a try. Thanks for the suggestion, Sophia. You're welcome. And remember, hobbies are for enjoyment. No pressure. I'll keep that in mind. Enjoyment, not perfection. Exactly. Well, I should get back to my project now. Me too. Let's promise to make time for our hobbies, okay? It's a promise. Take care, Lisa. And enjoy your photography. Thanks, Sophia. You too. Enjoy your reading and book club. Will do. Bye for now, Lisa. And good luck with everything. Bye, Sophia. And thanks for the chat. It's been uplifting. Staying motivated can be tough. What keeps you going, Lisa? For me, it's about setting small, achievable goals. It makes hobbies more rewarding. That's a great strategy. I like to remind myself why I started the hobby in the first place. Remembering the why is powerful. It brings back the initial excitement. It does. And how do you find time for hobbies with such a busy schedule? I look for pockets of time. Even 15 minutes a day adds up. That's true. Consistency is key, even if it's just a little each day. Exactly. And I try not to be too hard on myself if I miss a day. Being kind to yourself is important. We're human after all. Right? And sometimes I involve my family in my hobbies. It's fun. Family involvement is a great idea. It turns hobbies into bonding time. It does. And it's a way to share something you love with others. Sharing passions can be so fulfilling. Do you ever share your hobbies with friends? I do. Like photography walks with friends. It's social and creative. That sounds wonderful. I might join a group related to my interests. Groups can offer support and motivation. It's nice to be around like-minded people. It is. And they can inspire you to keep going when motivation dips. Inspiration from others is a boost. It's like a positive energy exchange. Definitely. And do you reward yourself for sticking with your hobbies? I do. Small rewards make the journey enjoyable, like a new book or a special treat. Rewards are a good incentive. They give you something to look forward to. They do, and it's a way to celebrate your dedication. Celebration is key. It acknowledges your effort and progress. Progress, no matter how small, is still progress. Absolutely. Well, I should get back to my reading. How about you? I'll be taking some photos. Let's keep encouraging each other, Sophia. Let's do that. Take care, Lisa. And enjoy capturing beautiful moments. Thanks to Sophia. You too. Enjoy your book and the adventures within. Will do. Bye for now, Lisa. And remember, hobbies are for joy. Bye, Sophia. And thanks for the reminder. Hobbies are indeed for joy.